Okay, Ray, we were talking a little about your basic training, your becoming an engineer in aircraft mechanic school and then gunnery school. And I guess after you had finished gunnery school, you got to go home on leave for a little while. You went to Westover, Massachusetts for a bit, and then you went to Charleston, South Carolina. And they put your original 10-man B-24 crew together there, right? That's true. So this is where you met the guys with whom you would be flying combat missions. That's true. And what do you remember about those guys? You had Lieutenant Lee was your pilot. Yeah. And my father, Jack Dempsey, is gunnery sergeant on the uh, nose turret. Tell me about what it was like to meet those guys. What, what impressed you about them? What do you most remember as you first got together being a crew? Uh, being me, I was more interested in the, in the uh, who's the pilot, you know. I wanted to get a good look at him quick, <laughs> but we was very lucky. We we got one of the finest men, uh, as as and also an officer. Uh, from he was, uh, Lieutenant Lee was from Oklahoma, and he was just as calm and collected at all times. Mm -hmm. And for us, that really meant something because we're strangers. We're just meeting each other. We're about half scared. One, when are we going to put? Are they going to put us into combat? But he kept us all in good shape, so forth. And I, that's, I'll never forget that fellow as long as I live. Mm -hmm. And you said he was also. You liked the fact that he trained you a little bit to be able to land that plane if it was necessary, huh? Well, so he was always thinking about that stuff. Yes, yeah, so he, he taught me on his own just to fly what they call in the pattern. You've already come back to the base and you've got permission to land. Then now you go, go you across that. Uh, it's uh, you go out to, to across the, the the end of the runway. You like it, but now now you start flying up uh, to up towards the end again. That's uh, the starting of it. Mm -hmm. And each time you tell the tower exactly who you are and what you're doing, and they can follow you. So that you up there now if you're turning like this. You, move over, this will be, uh, you tell the car, tech car that we are turning base, They're talking about the base leg. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the up one. Now you, you, he gives you permission to get in line and you're number one or number three to land or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And that's when you started. So he taught me to fly that thing just in case we ever needed it. Right up to, you know, head, head towards the runway. And for that point, you get you know might slow it down, or if you had to, just chop the engines and let it float down. I see. I never had to do that with my sister, so, but see. at least I knew partly how to do it. Mm -hmm. So as you were getting your crew together, was there anybody else that stood out for you? Maybe you, who was your? You have a special buddy, or you know what were the other guys like? How did you kind of get along with them and all? You were most concerned about a good pilot. Everybody can understand that. Yeah. But who else? Who else kind of stood out in your mind? Anybody? I, I can't really honestly say you know because we were uh, 18, 19 year old kids you know. Uh, never thought too much along those lines. All you, this is me, me, me. You know. I understand. And uh, but we we all got along fine. We had uh, do a lot of walking back and forth as a flight, mm -hmm. uh, aircraft flights. We didn't have a you know a base transportation to get us there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, I don't really remember as much along that line. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned, though, that uh, my father, Jack Dempsey, yeah. and Cornell or Corny Finero, they were your nose gunner and your tail gunner, mm -hmm. and that they seemed like a couple of characters to you. Everybody was teasing each other a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they kind of, for some reason, they kind of, well, I guess because they were from, born and raised in the near each other within the United States, you know. Yeah. And uh, forever teasing one another about, you know, and to, even to the point that uh, and once in a while we refer to old Corny Fornero, uh, uh, oh, you good looking uh, guinea, you know. Oh. And he, sa he had us to understand that, that, yeah, yeah, guinea. You know what that means in Italian? That's an Italian gentleman. He may have been right, I don't know, <laughs> but he let us know real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let me ask you one other question. Um, 
Tell us about your responsibilities as flight engineer. What did you do before the plane even took off? You had to do a walk around, I guess? Yes. I, just start, I always just started at the nose and went, went down the left-hand side of the aircraft, especially underneath the wings so forth, looking for maybe uh, fuel leaks, oil leaks around the engines mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, then all the way back to the, to the t tail end, look up and make sure there's nothing up that's going to prevent them from operating as, uh, operating as they should. Mm -hmm. and then come up the right side and do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. Then come into the aircraft itself. I, I, I normally come up through the bomb bay for some reason. And then immediately got the end of the aircraft and turned to my right. I had it all figured out and I've done it the same day after day. Now I moved back to, and checked on the, the nose gun and turret. Everything's in good shape here. The back up, so forth. Now I crawled up to the the uh, in, in within the cockpit area, there was a uh, chute open up it that we can crawl up on top of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Now I had to go down to each and every fuel tank and actually dip it. It didn't take nobody's word and see that 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 tank is completely full. Put the uh, cap on them, and then I had a uh, little roll of copper wire that would run through there and, and secure it with even then so it could never move. Did it on all all the fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. And that was just about to get to the point to make sure that the windshields were clean for the pilot and all of that. The ground crews did, uh, did that part of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And they they were fantastic, fine people. They, they got up before dark and done all their work and it was just wonderful when you got there that the, the thing that they had done for us. I think uh, my dad, Mr. Sergeant Dempsey, said the same thing every time. He said that ground crew, you could trust them with your life. That, that, that is true. They, they, well, we were very fortunate that they, they get a good ground crew like that. Mm -hmm. So in the next phase, let's say you've done your walk around, you've done your fuel checks, you're going to check the electrical systems on the plane and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then you get up in the air, and when we come back, I'll ask you a little bit about flying. Okay.